Hey everyone, it's Neon Polygons, and today I want to do a quick video showcasing the very rare Dreamcast accessory known as the portable Dreamcast LCD Dreampoint Bank Casio <laughs> TV. Quite a mouthful, but essentially the way how you got this screen was you had to be a Sega Japan membership rewards program member and uh, the program came with a number of different rewards that you can redeem your points for. So if you bought like a lot of Dreamcast games, uh, you bought some officially Sega licensed products from the website, from Sega Direct, uh, there was different tiers. And on the highest of those tiers was what you see here, which is a Casio portable LCD. Now, in reality, that TV screen was not made for the ground up from for the Se for Sega or <laughs> the Sega Dreamcast. Essentially, it was a Casio JY10 model and branded for Sega Dreamcast. But nonetheless, it is actually considered an officially licensed Sega product. Um, you know, there's you. Know, not a lot of information about this on the internet, but in a lot of the materials that I had and as showcased here, uh, one of the pamphlets that is included with this product is actually information on how to connect the Sega Dreamcast to the portable LCD itself. Now, as you see here, it's, it's quite a bit of um, wiring that has to go around here. You still have to power uh, your Dreamcast by, you know, an AC plug, but you would then connect the AV cables from the Dreamcast into a middleman connection, and those middleman connections would then connect to the AV cables back into the portable LCD of the Casio TV itself. Now included in the box is you know all the wiring as, as I'm showing here. This allows you basically to kind of get the audio and video out of the, uh, or in, uh, add the audio and video out of the TV itself. And then it does come with the two middleman connections as I'm you know, trying to pull out of the box uh, over here. So you attach one end uh, is the Dreamcast AV cables. And then on the other end, you attach the AV cables from the Casio TV itself. And then you plug in that last port into the Casio TV. And thus, that's how you're able to get the Dreamcast picture into the TV itself. And well, you know, that's, more or less it you know it comes in this nice big bright yellow you know very summery color tone um you know i kind of like it again these were portable tvs so they're kind of you know meant to be you know brought out brought to the beach brought on vacation and so that's why they kind of have this very like uh, you know out and about look to them uh, almost like you're ready to kind of take them to the pool uh, and as you see here, really the the only you know branding is really just this Dreamcast logo on the on the screen itself, and you know if, if I tried really hard, I can actually take out that branding. It, it really is just kind of a ironed on sticker to say Sega Dreamcast. So it's not really, as I kind of mentioned, uh, you know, a product that was built from the ground up for um, uh, b by Sega themselves. It's really just kind of like a third party product that Sega. Uh, you know, or Casio essentially got licensing rights to just put the Sega Dreamcast logo right on it. So um, the, the really cool thing behind this, about JY10, is that it actually can be battery powered. Uh, and there's a nice little stand here, so it can kind of be its own standalone. So if you think about it, you know, as I mentioned, um, it is a way to kind of play Dreamcast like on the go. Now you'll still have to power your Dreamcast uh, by plugging it in, but at least from a TV standpoint, it is indeed portable. Now, how does the TV actually look? Well, see for yourself. Um, here it is plugged into my Sega Dreamcast. Uh, it is being battery powered right now. Uh, my Dreamcast is being plugged in. I'm playing Fighting Vipers 2, and as you can see from the LCD, it's not the best screen quality for sure. I mean, the screen itself is, you know, basically, I think like one in or almost two inches in, in uh, diagonal distance. Uh, it is nice though that it does come with that stand so you can play it. But as you can see from the back, there's a lot of, you know, wiring. It's, it's not exactly like the, you know, most portable setup that you can do. And 
again, just playing Dreamcast on this thing or playing any video game platform on this thing, it's not the best screen. Now, again, it's that's not the point of this. The point of this is just the point. Uh, it's not getting great screen quality. The point of this is just for portability. And on that factor, you know, at least it does do its part. Now, in terms of the audio, it's not bad. Uh, it is mono, but music, vocals, sound effects, they're all discernible on, on this little TV itself. And it is loud. It does have, like, a pretty good volume control on it. But, again, from a, you know, collector's standpoint, you know, just, just know what you're getting here. This is not a fun way to play your Dreamcast, and it's definitely not an easy setup to play your Dreamcast. Because, again, while it is, the TV is portable, the Dreamcast, you still have to power it on. Um, so, you know, the screen quality, I'd probably say, is, you know, definitely on the low end of things, um, the low end scale of things. Uh, there have been screens that came out for video games before this, you know, most notably for the Turbo Duo and the Sega Nomad, and, you know, I would say, heck, even, um, uh, the Game Gear, and in a lot of ways, the screen is not as good as even the Game Gear's, uh, you know, LCD or LED screen, or LCD screen. Uh, you know, definitely something that I've seen, like, the, another portable, uh, that I featured, which was the... Turbo uh, Graphics LT, I believe. Like, that is a very superior LCD screen. This is definitely not. Um, but with that said, I think there is, again, a cool historical aspect to this. This was, you know, really the creme de la creme of Sega rewards that you can get from their Sega Japan Dream Point Bank membership rewards program. And not many of these are out there, not many of these, uh, I think, in terms of, with, at least with the Dreamcast branding uh, that people have shown on, on the internet. So, you know, just wanted to kind of put this out there for people to kind of get the experience of what it's like, what the screen was like. But uh, in terms of, like, a collectability, you really have to be, like, a really true diehard Sega collector to really want this. With that said, this is Neon Polygons. I want to thank you all again for watching and catch you all again soon.